Hey, this is Jack Stanley, and uh, I wanted to respond to a question I received uh, on YouTube um, pertaining to records, how they sound, the machines, how they work. Uh, received a very flattering email where, where someone was mentioning that they like the sound of the recordings and they like how the machines are always working so well. And they said, could you explain a little bit of what you do? Well, I'll try. First off, I'm an old collector. I've been collecting for many, many years, going back, uh, I started in 1969 with records, machines, 1972. But, uh... It's been a while, and I think one of the greatest things about someone who has done this for a long, long time is I have screwed up everything that I possibly can and have learned from it. When I first started, you got to remember, in the 70s, there was not a lot of information out there uh, as to, you know, uh, machines and the only people you could talk to were the people that had been there, and that's, I was fortunate to talk to a few folks who uh, had been on the scene, and I learned from them, and I learned by following them. I have to say, my first machines, well, they were finished by the time I finished with them. I, I learned every mistake. I broke everything and learned from it. I lost records, yes. I picked things up wrong. I played with the wrong needles. I, I, I did everything wrong that you possibly can. So with all of that being said, now I'm a very, very careful and cautious collector. Now I try to play on YouTube here recordings on all the original machines. I do have an electric player. I don't usually play uh, the machines very often on the outside horn machine or on the orthophonic. I play them sometimes. I have some standard records that it doesn't matter. But for really, really good records, I kind of stay away from the steel needle, except for one play, which I record here. I am very careful about the machines. I'm very careful about the needles. This is a very important rule. For those of you who are new to the hobby, you know, sometimes we who have been doing it a very long time forget the simple parts. And so if I may mention, make sure you change the needle every time, without exception. Okay, the needle bends when you play it. It changes. So when you put on the next record with that same needle, you have a needle that is ill-equipped to play a record well. And what it does is damage the record. So, please, always change the needles. It's very important. You can always replace the needles. You can many times not replace the records. So remember that. Very important. Now, for me, I lubricate all my machines very often. I look after them to make sure everything's working well. Uh, also, with the orthophonic machine, I make sure every joint is lubricated and airtight. Therefore, you get the bass. And if you've noticed, if you listen to the 812, it has a remarkable bass on it. And uh, that is basically the reason because that horn is airtight. Of course, it's a lot of work to do, and I... I don't recommend it for the faint of heart. But uh, if you can seal your horn, do it. It's well worth doing. Another thing, um, when I get records, I always clean them. Now, shellac records are very cleanable with water and a little, little light soap. I always use a toothbrush. Works very, very well on the record. And you can, you know... You know, take a record and gently clean the grooves with a little soap and water, constantly rinsing off the brush because you'll find you'll get a lot of gunk out of there. Oh, so be careful of the label. I mean, this is simple stuff. I don't have to mention that, but I guess I will. 
Be careful of the label with water. You can damage it. Now, with water being used on Victor Records, that's great, Brunswick, G&Ts, things like that, please do not get an Edison Diamond Disc anywhere near water. That will destroy them. And it's 5 o'clock. <laughs> and always remember, keep, keep uh, Edison Diamond Disc away from water. Also, remember, with Columbia Records, they're laminated. And a laminated record does not fare too well around water, so be careful with that as well. Um, but uh, you'll find it's remarkable what you pull up from a record when you clean it with the uh, toothbrush. But please, use this gently when you clean it. Don't push real hard because you will do some damage. And, you know, the grit that comes out is dirt that you gently pull out. But if you push real hard, that grit's going to be pieces of record. So, very, very simple. Why do my records sound good? Well, many of them are in good condition. Many of them are in so-so condition. But I do my best to play them as well as I can. My machines, I keep very well up. Uh, also, with reproducers, make sure the rubber is fresh. Okay, that's important as well. If it's hard, that diaphragm has difficulty moving and it can damage the records as well. Make sure uh, your orthophonic reproducer is well lubricated. Make sure it moves. Make sure the balls are all in place around the vibrating joints, okay? There's stuff like that. And, and once again, make sure you lubricate. Make sure you tighten everything. And your sound will increase if you have an airtight um, situation. Lastly... With all machines, I kind of look at them like wearing shoes with reproducers. With a machine, I'll have like four or five reproducers and try them all and find which one works best on the machine. Find the one that's suited for the machine. The machine uh, will find one it likes and seems to play best with. So if you get the opportunity to do that, that's what I've done with my machines. I fitted them out as to what made them feel best, and when they felt best, it was great for my ear. Also, the other thing, for the orthophonic, I did the same. I tried five different reproducers and finally found one that uh, remarkably sounded so much better. So, in closing this, to answer your question, just look after your records. Don't play them too many times with steel needles, okay? If you can play them electrically, do it on a more modern system that doesn't use a steel needle. Um, clean your records. Dirt can damage records. Keep your machines well lubricated. Look after them. Because they are old. They're mature. But they are designed to work well. They're machines. And you know something? They're so well built. If you take care of them, they will take care of you for ages. Don't wind your spring as far as it can go. Don't wind it that tight, okay? It's old. Remember, it's like taking your grandmother out into a racetrack and say, come on, Granny, let's run. Got to be a little gentle, okay? As we all get older, we understand that. And for young collectors just starting, remember the machines are old. And you will understand that as time goes on. So this is kind of like my long little answer to that question I hope I answered some of your questions and answered some of the things that you needed to know. But uh, most of all, take care of your records, and as the old saying goes, they'll take care of you.